Close your eyes and watch your breath. Keep the mind here with the breath coming in and going out. Let the breath be comfortable. When the breath is comfortable, it's soothing for the mind. When the mind is soothed, it's happier to stay in the present moment. This is good for the health of the mind as well. This is that time of year when we're all concerned about our health, all the diseases that are running around. But those are physical diseases. We have to make sure that we're concerned not only about the health of the body, but also the health of the mind, because the mind has its diseases too, and we want to put an end to those. You do this through the meditation. What are the diseases? We're not talking about crazy diseases, you know, severe psychosis, severe neurosis. We're talking about things like greed, aversion, and delusion, which all of us have. So we're all diseased to some, to some extent or another, and we all have the, the germs inside ready to leap out and have greed about something, or anger about something, or be deluded about something. In the same way that you pick up physical diseases from other people, you can also get the influence from other people in terms of their mental diseases as well. Sometimes they come at you with greed, and either you respond with greed of your own or anger of your own. They come with delusion, you pick up their delusion. So you have to make sure that you build up your resistance inside. This is why we meditate. To give the mind a sense of well-being inside, that means we're less likely to go for these germs, because what we find them attractive and what gives them power of the mind is that they promise a little bit of pleasure, and it's an immediate hit. There's an immediate hit for the greed, immediate hit for the aversion, and delusion is all kinds of things. And so, In order to counteract that need to go for the immediate hit of pleasure, we provide ourselves with a sense of well-being inside by getting the mind to settle down. When the breath is comfortable, the mind can stay, and when the mind can stay with something, that's when it feels really at ease. As the Buddha said, there is really no happiness aside from peace. You know, we can think of a lot of unpeaceful kinds of happiness. But what he's talking about is the mind's ability to stay with something for a while. The things we like is because we think we can stay with them. That little bit of time that we can stay and don't have to jump off right away. But here when you got something you can stay with for an hour or two hours, or you can stay with all the time, you begin to say, okay, that's a much more secure, much more reliable form of happiness. And the sense of well-being that comes from the mind. At first you may not notice it, but after a while you get used to it. And then if you lose it, then you realize you've lost something of value. So we don't work on this ability to stay with something that's here all the time and at ease all the time. And that gives a real sense of well-being to the mind. And then you can start thinking about all the things that would make you greedy or angry or deluded. And then use this stable mind to analyze, go, what is the appeal there? aside from the immediate hit. And you see that there may be some other appeals as well, but there's also a lot of drawbacks. Those are the things you've got to keep in mind so that you're less and less likely to go for these things. So when come, someone comes with greed, you don't have to respond with greed or anger. Someone comes with anger, you don't have to respond with anger. Someone's deluded, you don't have to pick up their delusion. You build up your internal resistance. So even though there are the diseases, the germs of these disease all around, not only in other people, you switch on the internet, there they are, switch on TV, there they are, you switch on the radio, there they are. Do you want to pick them up, or do you want to have a resistance so that you can overcome them? The meditation is what gives you this resistance, both the ease that comes when the mind is settled down and the insights that come when you start thinking about what really is important in life and the extent to which you want these things to interfere with a happiness that's more reliable. So in this way you develop the health of the mind. That's what the Buddha was talking about all the time. He would talk about how lack of disease in the body is a great treasure. But even greater treasure is lack of disease in the mind. And especially if you can maintain both treasures, but if you have to abandon one for the other, okay, hold on to the health of the mind. Because that's a lot, a lot more, more important. 